one of the things that you learn, I think, very, very vividly is when he said he doesn't want to hear of the United States again. I guess the counter to that is speaking of the United States again. Yeah. And what we learn is how he has been yearning all these years to speak about the United States. In effect, he's been talking to himself. So much of uh, the way we understand who we are and the world in which we live comes through the efforts to articulate it in language. And um, so much of who we are is also built up in terms of the memories of who we have been and who the people we love have been and the world we live in. Uh, the now is fleeting, um, but who we are is built up over ages, decades, and in our case, several hundred years. And speech is the vehicle uh, of memory. Mm -hmm. Speech and song and story. All of that is lost to a person who cannot speak speak of home. Um, the punishment, even if he were in the midst of everybody else, uh, would be to make him homeless. It, it, it creates a sort of public world in a exactly. sense. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. And it is the, really the basis of that, that public world. And when you lack that, um, you're lost in the fantasies of an inner life that may be completely unhinged or detached from anything real. I mean. Amy had said, and I think she, she was right to say it, that Nolan spent the rest of his life literally and figuratively at sea. But I would add a qualification. He actually spent his life not on the ocean as such, but in a little microcosm of the United States. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was of the United States, in the service of the United States, and yet, by not allowing anybody to talk of the United States in his presence, both he and they were denied the, the access to the ground of what it was that they were put together. Mm -hmm. That it was, um, that it was, it came at a cost to others if people don't have their memories and are not allowed to articulate them. Mm -hmm. uh, and people, they, they were, they were sort of, compassionate toward him. They didn't feel he should eat alone, so they let him come. But it was at a huge cost to have no one at the table, because all the things that human beings and society want to talk about, and especially the things of home, were taboo. No, we need stories, speeches, and songs, <laughs> and, and which I, I think I, I was struck in reading this story at how well it illustrates the, the raison d'etre for your book. That, that, that there's a whole generation of Americans who don't know these things. Uh, they, they haven't rejected them. They don't even know them, the young people. When I uh, was in elementary school in the 60s and my wife had the same experience, we read this story in school. Now, I, I doubt very much that anybody under the age of 25, uh, uh, one, in, one in 100 would know the story. And uh, that, it seems to me, is an argument. Uh, a strong argument for um, for presenting this story because it is a story about what happens to people when they are storyless mm -hmm. when they they when they can't tell their stories when they can't sing their songs when they can't uh, speak their speeches